So, Matthew McConaughey and Saad Guru are on a podcast together. Now, for those of you who aren't familiar, Saad Guru is a global spiritual leader, and Matthew McConaughey is a global spiritual leader. So I was listening to this podcast while I was working on something, and I overheard Sagudo say something that really took me aback. It almost disturbed me. He said, may your dreams not come true. May your dreams not come true. It's not something you typically expect from a global spiritual leader, right? And then I started to unpack what he was saying. And my interpretation of it was this. Oftentimes in life, our dreams are extensions of our limited experiences and perceptions. And it's not until we move forward past those dreams, whether it be forced or voluntary, that we're afforded an opportunity to live life even more abundantly than we ever could have imagined. And then I thought about my life. In my life, I've been Ron Burgundy, Deion Sanders, and Bill Gurley. So loosely translated, that means I've been first chair in a youth orchestra. I've been an NFL player for a number of years. And I'm currently a VC corporate businessman, if you will. And I thought about how each time I transitioned from one dream to the next, voluntary or forced, I was afforded an opportunity to live life more abundantly. And as I was thinking about this, I recognized what was going on today in society. I ran across a statistic from the US Bureau of Labor Statistics that said 47 million people voluntarily quit their jobs in 2021. That is a lot of uncomfortable conversations. And as I was thinking about that, I noticed that I recognized all too well what it feels like to leave a job, whether it be voluntary or forced. Equal feelings of excitement, skepticism, right? But more importantly, I know what it feels like when the honeymoon is over, six, eight, ten months in. I liken it to an eight-hour car ride to Disney World with your parents in the summer. After a couple hours, you start asking, are we there yet, right? Maybe I want to go to the state fair. You don't want to go to the state fair. You want to go to Disney World. So I thought I'd share with the audience here today two things that have helped me not only survive, but thrive as I've transitioned from dream to dream. First thing, burn the boat. Burn the boat. When I was a junior in college, my defensive coordinator showed us an image of a burning boat. I thought he was trying to tell us we were terrible and he was jumping ship. <laughs> but that, that wasn't the case. That wasn't the case. Instead, he proceeded to tell us about Hernando Cortez, who I recognize to be a problematic character. Now, for those who aren't familiar, Hernando Cortez, in the early 1500s, sailed from Spain to Mexico, invaded, colonized the Aztecs. And while I'm not here to debate how problematic he was, I will admit to you that he was effective because he literally burned the boat. So you can imagine, if you were a part of his crew, when you saw that boat go up in flames in Mexico as a Spaniard, you knew the only way you were getting back to your wife and children, your friends and family, was through, to execute the mission. I didn't realize how valuable that lesson was for me until a couple years later, when I was fortunate enough to be in the NFL. And whew, what a lesson it was. For those of you who aren't familiar, during camp, the roster shrinks from 90 to 53. And it was during that time that I came across my burn the boat lesson. A defensive coordinator said, Pellerin, out of the 15 people at your position, you're number 13. OK. So for the math people in the audience, the probability of me doing something other than football by the end of camp was very high. <laughs> I watched people in a similar position start to talk about how they wish they had transferred to this school. They wish they had a different agent, right? And the whole time, my mindset was completely shifted. I was thinking one thing, zip recruiter. I literally created an account. I didn't think I was going to make it. But shortly thereafter, shortly thereafter, I burned the boat. I locked in, and I was fortunate enough to make the team. I watched people in a similar position, unfortunately, start to struggle and not make the team. But why is that? Why is it so hard to stay put? There's a concept called pluripotentiality by Peterson, and which recognizes that never in the history of the modern universe has there ever been more opportunity for upward mobility. A couple LinkedIn articles, couple TED Talks, YouTube videos, and you can imagine yourself doing anything. But oftentimes, what that paradox of choice provides us is a paralysis, because the best opportunity is the one right in front of you. To borrow a quote we're all familiar with, the grass is always greener where you water. So burn the boat. Second thing, embrace the ugly. Embrace the ugly. By a show of hands, everyone in here, raise your hand if you have a child, niece, or nephew. 
Okay, keep them up. Now, by a show of hands, lower your hand if your child, niece, or nephew is ugly. Okay, let the record show a couple people lower their hands. You didn't pass the good person test. It's okay. It's okay. But when I said ugly, a couple of you all literally had a visceral reaction. I wasn't talking about your niece or nephew or your kid. But why is that? In the advent of social media, we've been bombarded with curated and choreographed images of success and happiness. 20 under 20, 30 under 30, new relationship, something you're not doing, something you're not doing. And oftentimes when we're transitioning to something new, what we start to do is overcorrect. We say, okay, well, instead of selling 100 widgets, now I want to sell 1,000 widgets. It doesn't really work like that. In Atomic Habits, we learn that the best way to set goals is to set small incremental steps, right? You can't dunk until you can jump over a credit card. It's a process. I was reminded of this when I was trans <laughs> transitioning from the NFL to corporate America. I was in business school and I was taking a class. I'm getting flashbacks just thinking about it. Statistics. <laughs> my first test, I literally started typing in my birthday, my friends and family, some of which in the audience. I started typing in their birthdays and moving decimal places around. I failed that test, right? But then I said, okay, how can I get better? I started studying better. I started going to office hours. I started dieting better. And by the time I took that final, I failed. It was a tough class, it was a tough class. But <laughs> a couple months later, I had the fortune of interviewing with a company that I was really interested in. I was awarded an internship. And lo and behold, the project that I had that summer required a heavy amount of statistical analysis. And while I didn't know the material well enough to test well, I heard the laughs, I did understand the concepts well enough to leverage them in my recommendation. I provided a recommendation for the project. That project later was escalated all the way to the Senior Operating Committee. I was presented in front of the Senior Operating Committee that recommendation ended up becoming action, and it really served as a seminal moment for me, letting me know that I could really do the corporate America thing. And it reminds me of this. Oftentimes in life, we try to draw a linear relationship to success in time. Well, because I've been working this hard, I deserve this much success. I've put in two weeks worth of work, I get two weeks worth of success. It doesn't work like that. <laughs> to borrow a southern phrase some of you all might be familiar with, you've never heard a tree grow. You've got to embrace the process and let the process take care of the results. So, as I conclude, for those individuals who are transitioning into something new, and for those individuals who are now feeling the weight of their new decision now that the honeymoon phase is over, I want to remind you of two things. First, burn the boat, and second, embrace the ugly. Thank you.